we're going to present another in our series of interviews with some of Jacksonville's broadcast pioneers. And here we have Harry Reagan interviewing none other than Jacksonville's own Ernie Mastriani. Take a look. Well, first of all, we didn't have a TV what? in my house. Oh. And you used to have to go to the neighbors to watch a show if you want to see a show. And it was black and white. And uh, I, at that point, I went to uh, school, radio and TV school, took a trip to Florida to, vi to uh, get to meet my wife's uh, family. And sitting there watching TV in St. Augustine, the, where they live, and said to myself, self, you're as good as these people on the TV. Uh, by now, I had gone to school for two years, so I knew everything there was to know about television and radio. All right. All right? And uh, came to Channel 4 unannounced, came in, in, in the old building, of course, uh, came in and, and uh, asked if they were hiring, and uh, well, not really, but we're always looking for, for people. Back then, there weren't, there weren't a lot of people in TV, especially on camera. Uh, so uh, they said, do you have a tape? It's a tape. They didn't have tapes back then, right? Lucky if they had a tape recorder, let yes. alone a videotape. Anyway, says, when you go back to Massachusetts, send us a tape, and we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch with you. So I went back to Massachusetts. I still didn't have a tape. And said my, told my wife, let's go to Florida. Seems to me there's more opportunities in Florida than there are in Massachusetts. Uh -huh stayed uh, there, there at Channel 4 <coughs> for the next uh, almost 15 years. And uh, here I am. And I met this guy that came to work for us about six months after I did, and he's sitting here next to me, across from me now. And Harry, uh, Harry didn't have any more experience than I did, less. as a matter of fact. A lot less. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember taking Harry out, to, out in the field with a camera and uh, giving him a script and stand there now and read this story. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so little by little, we, uh, we worked our way up into doing other stories, bigger stories and big, bigger stories. This was in 1967. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the time of uh, desegregation in public schools. And uh, there were no blacks. We had no, no blacks. We had one black man work, working at Channel 4, mm -hmm. and he was the messenger. Uh, and then we had another one that came after him, but he was the janitor. Right. So in essence, we had no on-camera people and no reporters, nothing. Everybody learned by, I think, by magic. And anyway, one day I was walking in the newsroom, and the news director, Bill Grove by name, who was a legend right. and one of the finest people I've ever known, uh, he was the news director. And I had been working there maybe a year by now, and uh, Bill stopped me in the hallway. He says, come here. Come to my office and to go in the office, and she has. He said, "How do you feel about blacks?" I said, "I, I don't, I don't have any feelings about blacks. Why do you ask?" He says, "Well, we don't do any stories about black people, black community, black leaders in Jacksonville." I said, "There are no black leaders in Jacksonville. There, 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 no, there are no blacks that are known or in politics or." He says, well, we, we really should be doing stories. I said, he, he, I, he said, do, would, would, it, would you object to going into the black community, make yourself known, and, and uh, start doing some stories up there? And I said, it's fine. Well, one thing led to another, and, and, and uh, 
this could lead to a very long interview if we, if okay. we wanted to. <laughs> Instantly, I became a black reporter. I became, <laughs> and whenever there was a story that had to do with the black community, they would call me. And they go up there and, and consequently, I became friends with a number of these people, which was proved to be very, very helpful later. Then there was a series of stories about black people. And all of a sudden, not only I was now the black reporter, I was the investigative reporter. Now, I didn't know what that meant. And it's to told me you're, you're the investigate. Excuse me, you're the investigative reporter. I said, what does that mean? What 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 am I supposed to do? Well, you're going to go find stories about bad people. Some not so bad, some good, but people that are doing wrong things. Mm -hmm. Station manager was an interesting man. He uh, he was a redneck. He was a racist. But he never interfered with stories that had interracial uh, qualities. He kind of, I guess, got his paycheck every month or every year, whenever hell he got paid, and uh, just kind of pretended that nothing was going on. And the news director, Bill Grove, whom I mentioned earlier, and another man named Norm Davis, who used to be the editorial writer here, mm -hmm. who hired you, as a matter of fact, right. brought you up here from Miami. Uh, see, it, it uh, but he, he, the station, ma owner, well, he was not just the manager, he was the owner, he owned the station. The station was finally bought by Post Newsweek, and uh, everything changed. All of a sudden, we have black people working here. We even had girls working here on the air, uh, which was just un unheard of. Blacks and girls both. And so, yeah, the, 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 those were the big, big changes. And what we have is what, we, what, we, what we're doing now. The stories didn't make any difference who it was, where it was, who was concerned who got in trouble, who didn't get in trouble. And it, yeah, it was a, obviously a, a, a big, big, big change. And uh, I kept doing my um, investigative reporting uh, and, and did some great stories. Uh, I, I think they, I, I know they were. I, once One story ended up with uh, uh, guys going to jail, going to federal prison. Sitting in a newsroom one day, Channel 4, the old Channel 4, and uh, I was bored. I was bored stiff. I had done all these stories for, for years now. I mean, they had piled up, and I, 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 I used to think, I said, there's nothing more I can do. I was working on a story that was going to be my farewell, not to go teach, but to get out of the television. I was just tired of it. Hmm. Anyway, I was uh, sitting in the newsroom talking, and these two guys had just been hired to Channel 4. I don't think you know them. Andy and uh, who was the other one? I can't, it's not important. They were sitting there, and they had just finished the master's program at Northwestern University. And we were sitting there talking about it, and I was saying, John, yeah, yeah, that's some bull with all of you. Know, I, there's no more stories. I don't. There's no more stories I want to do. I can't think of any more stories. Well, Northwestern is looking for a teacher. I said, I, I, I don't know anything about teaching. I said, well, it doesn't matter. I said, well, it's such a hell of a school. You can be a teacher, and you, you don't have to know anything about teaching. Anyway, again, to make a long story short, I, I called the, the dean at, at Northwestern University, told him who I was and, and what I did. Anyway, they flew me up there to Chicago and got interviewed, and, and the dean, again, for whatever reason, decided to hire me. And now here I was teaching a graduate program at Northwestern University, which is known, was known, and is known as one of the finest journalism schools in the country, probably. And, and there you are, no PhD, hmm? no master's degree. No master's degree. Uh, 
no, no bachelor's no degree. bachelor's degree, no degree at all. Right. No. That's amazing. It is amazing, and and it it, it, it was an amazing school, an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. If it hadn't been because my wife hated Chicago so much, I probably would still be there. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful program. It was the kind of program that could be emulated by stations mm -hmm. because these, I, we took these kids that came right, w literally walk right off the street. I want to be a reporter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, oh, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> I said, I can, I can show you how to do that. <laughs> and within a week, within a week of them starting that program, they were out on the street with a camera, you know, taking video, writing stories. And it was, uh, <laughs> it was a wonderful experience. It, it truly was. And, and you were there for uh, three, mm. you were there for three years? Almost two years. Oh, two years, okay. Yeah. And then back to Jacksonville. Back to Jacksonville. I had a call from Howard Kelly, who was the uh, station manager at Channel 12 at the time, and asked me if I'd be interested in coming back to Jacksonville. And I said, no, I, I, I love it here. And I did, I love Chicago. But they made be an offer that you, you know. Mm -hmm. So back I came, and, and here I am. So uh, what did you do at 12? At 12? Yeah. Um, well, at 12, I did a little investigating report, and I anchored. I was not a very good anchor uh, at all. And uh, so I didn't last very long there, maybe a couple of years, two and a half years. And then. Uh, uh, ran for property appraiser, and uh, uh, again, another wonderful experience. I had done uh, investigative reports about the property appraiser before when I was an investigative reporter. So I knew quite a bit about the office and how corrupt it was yeah. and how screwed up it was. And I, so, yeah, I got a, a phone call from this guy who says, uh, are you still interested in doing stories about the property appraiser? I said, yeah. So he said, well, meet me at such and such, meet, meet me at this church over in Arlington at noontime, which I did. And he just sat there and he said, okay, if you're really interested, here's some property record card numbers you look those up and see what you find. So I said, okay. So I did, and I found, sure enough, there's all kinds of wheeling and dealing going on in this property. Uh, and so I called him. I, I said, here's what I found. He said, that's right. He said, now I'm going to give you some more to call. He got his call. And I got a whole bunch of information that, that Jesus, I was ready to kill somebody for. Him. And, uh, got the information and started investigating on my own besides the information this guy had given me. And I had taken and started to get rid of my anchor. I said, I, can't, I don't want to anchor for a while. I, I, need, I need some time off. I need time to get, in, get into this stuff that I got here. Okay, so I did. And I wrote, I think, I'm trying to remember, Harry, I think I wrote 10 stories about some of the biggest well-known people in Jacksonville. If you're really interested, I'll tell you later who they were, because I never did use their names. Ah, well. Now, there was a reason for that. Go ahead. I, I'm going to give you the reason. The, uh, I had all these stories scripted. All I had to do was go out and shoot the video and these stories. These stories, in my opinion, would have won an Emmy Award they were that good and showing how corrupt an office could become with the same guy there for years and years and years and years. You know that story. Anyway, the news director, I, I, I talked to the news director, said, these stories are ready to go. I said, whenever you're ready, just let me know and we'll run them, one right after the other. He says, we, never, we need to let the lawyers see that first, hmm. which was, which was, Normal, mm -hmm. as you know. Yeah. When you had stories that were potentially dangerous, you could let the lawyer look at them. 
Anyway, the lawyer comes over. I don't remember his name, but that's not important either. He's a young guy. And he's sitting there in our office, and he's reading these stories one after the other, and he's looking at me, and he's looking at this, and he's looking at me, and he's looking. He finally gets through reading all those stories, and he said, wow. He said, this is dynamite. <laughs> I said, yeah, I think so. He said, well, he said, if, if, uh, if you want a decision from me, what I would do is run these stories, but not include the names of all these people. I said, excuse me? I said, what the hell good are the stories without the names telling who, the, who these people were? And uh, he says, well, anyway, that's, that's what I would do. So he left. The news director says, uh, what do you think we should do? I said, we run the stories. He said, there's nothing, there's nothing false in the stories. The stories are true. I got it, I, everything is documented. Every, every fact in there is... Is, is available. You can go down yourself and do do you 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 can do this report yourself. You don't need me. Well, let me think of. Let me excuse me. Let me think about it. So he thinks about it, and then he comes in my office and says, "Take the names out." I said, "What?" He said, "Take the names out." I said, "Oh." I said, "I don't think I can do that." He says, "Well, we're not going to run those stories with the names." I said, okay, got up from the, his office, walked to my office, and picked up my pen off the table and my picture of my two kids and uh, drove down to my lawyer's office and said, how do I get out of my contract? So the newspaper then started doing my story. Now, they changed them a little bit, but they ended up doing my story. And, like I said, guy, one guy goes to prison, and several guys lost their jobs, and, and uh, that was the end of that story. No, that wasn't the end, because I ran for the office and got elected. Harry, I've had a very, very interesting life, a very wonderful life, in fact. Hello, you've been watching an oral history interview with Ernie Mastriani broadcast legend in Jacksonville, and you can go to jackshistory.com to view other uh, wonderful oral histories on the jackshistory.com website. Also want to mention, don't forget the Port of Jacksonville Pilot Club Cemetery Tour, October 11th and 12th. All the money collected for tours goes to charity. In fact, it goes to the North Florida School of Special Education. And for now, Enjoy the city's history, and we're out of here because we're history. Thanks a lot.